Okay. So say hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Say hello, hello, 11 o'clock people. Hi. Hi, 11 o'clock. All right. Hi. If we have no class at 11 o'clock, like our lab, does that count? It's nothing from 11 to 12, so you start at 12. Yeah, so you just can do whatever you want to do. Okay, so uh, before we get started with the PowerPoint, I want everyone to notice uh, under Chapter 10 tab here, under the muscle man, I guess it's a guy, we have some handouts um, that you'll want to bring for Monday. Some of these you might have uh, if you're in my lab, because I handed out these muscle list and biomechanic sheets in lab. But otherwise, if we look at the upper extremity list here, and it's the same you know, list you'd have in your lab book, it's just configured a little different. This is how we're going to talk about it in this class. So I've got all the muscles we're going to cover, right? It's a lot of them. Same thing for the leg, right? So you want to print off both of those for the upper and lower extremities. They're right here. Same thing for biomechanics. This, this information will be in the PowerPoint as well, but it's nice to have it you know, in a one-sheet handout to help just for quick studying. And then this one right here, Origin, Insertion, Action. For lab and lecture, we're required to have you guys know specifically the Origin, Insertion uh, for 10 muscles, right? It's roughly 10 there. So everything in bold is what you're absolutely required to know, right? Which are the major muscles of the shoulder and hip and our knee? Uh, so we've got bicep, tricep, pec major, deltoid, that kind of thing. Um, we'll cover that. And then for the leg, of course, quads, hamstrings. If you're wondering what muscles do we really, really have to know, well, you really have to know every one of them. But what you really, 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 really should focus on, just as an obvious you know, study tactic, would be the big ones, right? Like, you can't come to the exam and not know quadriceps and hamstrings. That'd be silly, right? You can't come to the exam without knowing pec, deltoid, bicep, tricep. Those are the easiest, most superficial, the ones that are most noticeable. you got to know those, right? As I said in my lab yesterday, don't even come to the test, you know? Don't even set your alarm in the morning and come to the test <laughs> if you don't know those muscles. It's just as simple as that. So you have to know them. There's so many people that focus on all the wrist muscles, you know, because those seem more difficult, or the ankle muscles, and they skip trap, lat, deltoid, pec, and I'm telling you right now, you have to know those, right? And it's on the list. So know the list. The origin insertions are not that bad, because once you know the bony landmarks enough, and we've already been through those, and you've done them in lab, then on a multiple choice test, it's not hard to figure out what the origin or insertion would be. So we'll talk about that as well today and Monday. So we'll introduce muscles today, we'll probably get a little bit through the skull, and we'll whiz through that, and then Monday will be very, very, you know, topic heavy on the shoulder. Wednesday will be topic heavy on the leg, and then Friday, of course, we'll finish up leg and um, kind of round everything out with chapter eight. Okay, let's get started. Last night from the chapter it's available now. There was a link problem. Yeah, so try again. Yeah, those links get broken. I have to fix them like every semester for some reason. Okay, let me get to my PowerPoint here. All right, so even before we get with the first slide, I want to write some things on the board. Because, yes, the, um, the PowerPoint is going to start with, you know, the skull muscles and such like that. We've already done that, but I want to keep your attention on what the major focus is going to be on, which is biomechanics, right? This chapter is about what the muscles do. It's your job in lab to figure out where the muscles are. We don't have a, a muscular model in here. Right, all best we can do is just point to our body and name the muscles, right? So I urge you, take that muscle list, practice over and over and over again. I find that, and I wish I could do this, if I could stop people at the door, right, before they even come into class, and ask them, okay, before you come in, 
can you point to the pec major? Can you point to the deltoid? Can you point to the trap? Can you point to the lat? And then those people that can't do that, by the time they come in the class Monday, then they might as well stay out in the hall, right? Or just go home. And I don't mean to be rude, but if you're not doing work at home to get this or in lab, then you're just not going to get it, you know? You really need to do this at home. There's not enough time to cover it all in class. And the benefit of that is if you do do it at home, then you get to enjoy the discussion we have about it. Otherwise, you're just all stressed out like, what in the world is he talking about? So do your half of it right, and then let me kind of hold your hand and carry you to the promised land of success in this chapter. And it can be fun. It can be very, very, very easy if you let me teach you, right? Or if you do it the other way, which is not do your half, not study at home, you know, stress out about it, that session's not going to work. So you need to do some work at home. All right, so things I want to cover with you at first um, about the muscles, right? So this chapter really is all about skeletal muscle. What chapter is it? It's chapter 10. Oh, yeah, chapter 9 is um, the study of, tissue, of the muscle tissue. Okay. Chapter 10 is the function of the, of the muscles, right? So, yeah, we're skipping 9. We've gone 6, 7, we're skipping 8 right now and going to 10. I'm only skipping 8 because once we finish this chapter, you'll kind of already know what 8 is. It's more important to do this chapter first. Chapter 8 just kind of slides in the side door, really. We just add some terms to what we already know. Okay, so with skeletal muscle, we're going to look at attachments. Not the kind of attachments that you talk about in Buddhism, but these are physical attachments on the bone, right? <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> Have you ever studied Buddhism? <laughs> yes, we're all Christians, I know that. Or some of us might be Jewish. Do y'all think I look Jewish? Yeah, everyone thinks I'm Jewish. I um, probably am, you know. We probably all are, actually, if you go back to the whole origin of things, you know. Crazy enough, if we all came from Adam and Eve, wouldn't that make everything incestual? But 50 generations out, they don't, want, they don't call it incest. And this is a great conversation to have on a recording. <laughs> it'll keep, it'll like, everybody will wake up. What? What did you just say? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> keep it interesting. <laughs> All right, so attachments mean skeletal muscles will have an origin and an insertion. Right? The origin is stationary and the insertion is the mobile attachment. So that's the first thing we have to know. Now in the face, you know, it's not as clear what those are, but this will be definitely clear on the extremities, on the arms and legs and the trunk, of course. So origin is what does not move, the insertion is what does move, okay? So when we talk about the arm moving, then in order for that humerus to move or that femur to move, that means that a muscle is inserting to that bone, or at least crossing the joint that works that <coughs> bone, and pulling that bone, right? So that pulling is, an, is the other key. So with our biomechanics, we have to know, number one biomechanic rule is that muscles pull, right? They do not push bones. Even though we have pushing actions, if you go back in the biomechanics, it's always a pulling of a muscle. You have to just trust me on that. So if you take your, your bench press, right? It doesn't look like you're pushing. But in reality, it's muscles pulling the bone that make it look like it's pushing. So you have to just trust me. We'll get into it a little later. Okay, so muscles pull. And that's number one, which means they shorten. So when muscles do work, 
they shorten, right? They pull and they shorten. They pull on a bone somewhere. And the way that they shorten, or the way that they pull, is always from the insertion towards the origin. So they always bring the insertion to the origin. So for example, easy example, and you can apply this all around the body. If we do this, put your hand on the pec major, right, and we'll get to all the muscles individually. But for right now, real easy. Pec major is right here, no doubt, right? The origin is where the base of your palm is, sternum, and clavicle. medial clavicle, right, just as an example. The fingers are going where? To the humerus, right? <coughs> so if that's the insertion, this is the origin. What does that muscle do when it pulls, when it shortens? It pulls toward the origin, right? Which is flexion and adduction. So adduction is when the arm comes in, flexion is when the arm goes forward. Isn't that what you do when you do a, a bench press, right? Your arm is actually pulling in and forward. So that's what how the pecs work out for that type of action. So yeah, the third thing would be, and this is more of an obvious statement, is that if we're expecting any muscle to pull on a bone and that joint to move, then this is an extremely obvious statement. It's probably not worth writing, but sometimes you need to be incredibly obvious. Muscles must cross a joint in order to work on that joint, right? So we're expecting that the pec major tendon, which is the last part of the muscle when it attaches to the bone, so all muscles turn into a tendon when they attach to the bone, right? At least all the muscles we're going to cover. That tendon must cross that joint space, right? In order to act on that joint. So a muscle must, the third one is, a muscle must cross a joint in order to work on that joint or move that joint. Do y'all get what I'm saying? A muscle must cross a joint in order to work on that joint. So here's the obvious part about it. Does the pec major work on the knee joint? No. no. Why? Because it does not cross that joint. Does it work on the elbow joint? No. No, right? Because it does not cross that joint. So. Like Snoop Dogg, you got to cross the joint in order to work that joint, right? <laughs> an, I can't know. That's just an old stupid joke. Another thing to just keep you awake. Did he really just say that? Okay. These jokes are so old, man. That joke is from like I'm serious. I don't know, 2000. That's how long I've been teaching this stuff. It just came to me. My first class I ever taught was a night class at a massage therapy school. It was a four-hour class. I was like, what, what in the world am I going to talk about for four hours? So why not mention Snoop Dogg, right? And the other one for Peck Major, because I was listening to a lot of rap at this time. The, peck, the full action of Peck Major is to flex, adduct, and meter rotate. So what's that? <laughs> Picture me rolling, right? That's Tupac, Picture me rolling. That's how we got to know those muscles. And it all worked out, right? Everybody learned it. So I need to have a, uh, a hip-hop version of A&P um, <laughs> online, don't I? <laughs> okay. All right, for location, all of this comes together. See, we spend time, this is where time is valuable, right? You don't want to spend time studying flashcards, learning every action for every muscle, right? That's the wrong way to do it. I've done it that way, and trust me, it's the wrong way. Studying it like this, the background, you know, behind the curtain, biomechanics of why muscles do what they do, once you know why they do what they do, you can look at any muscle and immediately know, okay, that's what it's going to do based on its location. Based on these rules, based on these attachments, and based on the muscle location, you will always know what any muscle can do. It's very, very easy, actually, when you learn it the right way.